Good morning! It is a wonderful day to be at church, especially for our church to be in this church. It's a very, very special day. It is uh, what would normally be Homecoming Sunday. It's the anniversary Sunday of the founding of our church, 1935. You'll hear a lot more about that later, but we are so thankful. I'm glad 85 years ago, a group of people said, we need a church in the Anderson Creek area. And we're here today because of that vision. Praise the Lord. I think God has blessed those faithful folks. So speaking of faithfulness, we're going to sing some songs today that speak about the Lord's faithfulness. So stand with me. Um, this first song is talking about how God is um, someone we can always lean on. It is leaning on the everlasting arms. We can be safe. We can be secure. We don't have to have any fear, nothing but peace. Because his arms are strong and he is faithful. Amen. We can trust him in every situation of life. That's been true. That'll be true in the future. Let's sing. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness. What a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Hey, Amen. Wonderful singing. You can be seated. All right. And that was good singing. Well, welcome this morning. Good to see you this morning. And we had a good nine o'clock Sunday school hour. And we're in a great series and a great lesson. And uh, I was telling Brother John, he was telling me, I saw some things in Galatians that I'd never seen before. And uh, kind of gave some clarity, but uh, you can join us at 9 o'clock if you'd like, or you can join us online and join us for Sunday school each Sunday morning, and if you don't have a, uh, a, a book, uh, see Brother John, and uh, then the handouts, I think, well, maybe there's some, still some handouts back there at the back, but good to see you this morning on this very, very special, special Sunday, the 85th. Uh, homecoming of the church. I did not start the church. Just remember that. I did not start the church, all right? Uh, I've only been here a while, but uh, uh, if you have an offering, you can put it in the back, back there in the box. And uh, let me say, we uh, thank you so much for the candy that you brought so far, and we still need more. And we have a lot of bags of candy to put together, and we'll begin a little bit of that in, uh, this week to kind of see how much candy we're going to need. And, uh, but next Sunday, we need the candy by next Sunday. So if you can bring that, uh, or Wednesday night, or if you'll call the office and make arrangements, you can drop it off here. And we, would, we appreciate it and appreciate everything that you've done already. And we are preparing for a great big drive through trunk or treat. We are the only one just kind of looking around just our area. I'm not sure. There may be a few, but we are the only one that I know of is having a trunk or treat on October 31st. I think uh, Flat Branch is having theirs on the 27th and I'm not sure about others and then there's some others are not doing anything. So we're planning on a big time and we're going to have to uh, have some help and we'll be contacting some of you and, uh, uh, and, and in order to, to put all that together. But looking forward to that. Also our shoe boxes, we announced last week doing our shoe boxes just a little bit different. Now, if you want to, if you want to pack a shoe box, 
Uh, we won't be we won't be getting them here to the church. But if you want to pack one and you want to mail it uh, to New Missions, if you'll see me, we'll be happy to get you that information. Or if we've kind of made it easy this year, they'll pack one for you uh, in your name, and you can send it to your sponsor child if you have a sponsor child. Uh, that you're already sponsoring in Haiti or just a child in Haiti. And uh, that's $49, and that's including the shipping, and they will take care of all that. Or you might say that's a little steep and you can't afford that. Well, maybe you want to help with just the shipping, and that's $8. And uh, maybe you want to do one or two. Uh, But anyway, there's a sheet out there in the lobby that's kind of self-explanatory. And if you're used to doing things online, down there at the bottom is the website. takes you right to the giving page, and you're able to take care of all that there with new missions. And uh, so help us with that, please, even though we're not having and stacking them up like we have done in years past. Let's do a good showing. We have a praise this morning. I shared this in Sunday school hour, and uh, you all that have been uh, investing in and praying for Samuel Adams, just to let you know, Samuel has his first apartment. Uh, and moved in yesterday and got a raise at his job, got hired full-time. And uh, so we praise the Lord for that, that the Lord has worked in Samuel's life. And we'll have his address in the, uh, in the uh, prayer list update that we do on Wednesday. And maybe just drop him a card in the mail and let, you, let him know that you're rejoicing with him at what the Lord's doing in his life. And then, we, of course, we have some prayer requests that are on our hearts today, Jack and Mary. You'll continue to pray for them. Talked to Jack for a good while yesterday, and Jack is doing better. And uh, but Mary's still in the hospital. Mary still needs our prayers. If you'll continue to pray for her, and then Shirley Hall, if you'll continue to pray for Shirley and her family, and then uh, Ronnie, uh, Brenda's brother, uh, had to go to the hospital and now home, and they called in hospice. So the hospice folks met with him yesterday. So if you'll continue to pray for. Him and then pray for each other and uh, let's bow and pray together. Father, we come today thanking you for the blessings and goodness of this beautiful, beautiful day that you've given to us and this this very special time in the life of our church. And as Brother John mentioned, we thank you that 85 years ago a group of people met together and with a desire to have a church here in Anderson Creek. And we thank you for your blessings upon Leighton Chapel. We pray your continued blessings upon Leighton Chapel. And uh, Lord, our activities, our outreach uh, activities that are coming up. And then, uh, Lord, you be honored and glorified in everything we do. And in these special requests that are on our hearts today. Have your will and way, we pray. Bless in the service. We pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 All right, Brother John. Good thing to think about is what are you doing through the church and in the ministries of the church that people will 85 years from now be saying, I'm sure glad that uh, those people had a vision for what the Lord could do, even in a little country church like ours. What, are, what seeds are you sowing? Um, we had a great time in Sunday school. We did indeed. It's a great study. You mean after... 30 years of preaching, or actually more than that, you can still learn something from Galatians 5? Wow, well if the preacher's learning stuff, and I am too, then uh, you can as well, so hope you'll join us. Let's take our Bibles, we're going to do our scripture reading from Psalm 89. Psalm 89, and when you find it, if you're able to, please stand if you'd like to read along with us. We'll be reading from the King James Version, verses 1 through 8. And we will begin with the reference, read the verses together, and then end with the reference. We will. So let's begin. I forgot to do that in Sunday school. Okay, that's why I I messed that up again. Let's begin. Psalm 89, verses 1 through 8. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever. 
and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee. Psalm 89, 1 through 8. Amen. You think about it. We have a 85-year history here at our church. Our country has a couple hundred-year history. But you think about the people of Israel, those that were writing and reading and singing these psalms, all the hundreds and hundreds of years they could point back and say, God's been faithful. God's been faithful. And He'll still be faithful. Amen. He keeps His Word. He keeps His promises. We can totally trust Him. So we're going to sing a new song this morning, but you already know the tune. I heard this song a while back, and I thought, wow, we need a great um, opportunity to sing this. This is such a good song. And then uh, Homecoming Sunday presented itself as a perfect opportunity. So this is a song that is set to the tune of Old Lang Syne. How many of you know the, the tune of Old Lang Syne? All right, well, it's the exact same tune, but the words speak of God and His faithfulness and our trust in Him. And so we're going to sing this together. We'll do two verses to begin with. Your grace will never be forgot. Your mercy all my life will be my soul's forever song. My story and my life from mountain top to valley low through laughter and through tears show me the goodness of my god will follow all the years for all that you have done for us for every battle won we'll raise a song to bless your heart for all that you have done in all our failures and regrets you've always led us home redemption's arm has raised us up our triumph in the storm for all that you have done for us for every battle won we'll raise a song to bless your heart for all that you have done in unity we'll stand as one as family will go shoulder to shoulder hand in hand into the great unknown for all that you have done for us for every battle won we'll raise a song to bless your heart for all that you have done We'll raise a song to bless your heart for all that you have done. Amen. Wasn't that a great song? I love that. I think that is fantastic. But when it comes to songs praising the Lord for His faithfulness, you just cannot top. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Morning by Every single morning, His mercies are new. And there is more of God for us to experience every single day. Amen. Let's sing together. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. 
morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto me you know i was thinking about this and i, I hope the preacher wasn't planning on saying this but uh, 1935, when they started this church, what was going on in the country? The Great Depression. And a group of God-fearing, God-trusting people said, we're going to trust the Lord, and we're going to make a church. Um, the same God that was faithful back then, who provided everything they needed back then, He's still faithful today. doesn't matter what we're going through, what's going on in the country. The country's in a mess, amen? It is. God is faithful. We can trust Him. That's what this song talks about. Let's sing again. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow Blessings all mine with ten thousand besides Sing it out now Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let's take it up a key. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto Amen. Let's pray together before we go on. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for your, you are faithful. Your word is faithful and true. We can trust your pom promises. We can trust your strength. Lord, you haven't, uh, you haven't gotten any weaker. You're still the great and mighty and powerful God that they worshiped back then. And Lord, we commit ourselves and our church to you, Lord, trusting you for the future. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You can be seated. All right. You can be seated. Good to see you this morning. Uh, you know, some people, some people cry when they hear taps. I always cried when I heard old egg Zion. And uh, it's just me. It's just me. Some people cry at happy birthday. I don't know, you know, just, but uh, anyway, thank you, Brother John. Uh, well, this is our 85th homecoming. And uh, children's church, I'm sorry, kids can go to children's church, I'm sorry, about forgot that, and uh, happy kids going to happy children's church. So you say, well, what's in it for us? Well, let me explain this morning, let me explain this morning. You know, these are, these are dark days, I mean, no doubt about it, Brother John mentioned it, these are dark days, difficult days, a lot of unknowns, uncertain things that are out there. Still got a couple more weeks of political ads, and uh, just remember, all those ads are true. Every one of them <laughs> is true, all right? And uh, a lot of bad news, and uh, 
Our lives have been changed forever. And, uh, but you know today, listen, for these next few moments, here's what I want us to do. All right, I want you to sit back, get your Bible, and I want this today to be, and I think it's already started out that way. I want this, today, this day to be a day of blessing. I want this day to be a day of thanksgiving and praise and rejoicing, and we're going to do a little reminiscing, uh, but I want us to laugh a little bit today, and I want us to be thankful uh, and give God the glory for this day that we have today to celebrate uh, this special time uh, in our church. I want you to turn to 1 Kings chapter 8, 1 Kings chapter 8. Uh, homecoming uh, just simply means come home, and uh, homecomings of the past, it was set aside to honor the longevity of the church. So today, the third Sunday in October, uh, we gather together to celebrate the 85th anniversary, 85th birthday of Leighton Chapel Baptist Church, October 1935. Church is in, I mean, the, the nation's in depression. 1935, the Social Security Act began uh, here in our country. But uh, now, sad, that we're just going to be sad just for a moment, just for a second. Uh, because due to what's going on around us with the coronavirus, we got to do things just a little bit uh, different. And uh, so we're going to do, all right, that's the sad part. Now let's get happy again, all right? Uh, so we want you to go home, enjoy a meal, go to Hardee's, McDonald's, wherever you want, and celebrate the homecoming of the church. But uh, traditionally, homecoming uh, is dinner on the grounds, all right? Dinner on the grounds. In recent years, we've had lunch at the church, the gym. I mean, excuse me, the gym over on Elliott Bridge Road. Uh, in years past, uh, one year we had, a, we had a great big tent set up out here in the yard in the front of the church, and we had uh, homecoming in it. Uh, for some years, I'm not sure how many, we would go down to the old Anderson Creek gym, and of course they tore it down now, but we would go down there and spend all day Saturday cleaning up the Anderson Creek gym, and it would not be cleaned up again until we cleaned it up the next year. But uh, our folks decorated it up. We've had the Rochester's come, and, and sing for us on homecoming. And then the mugs. And then the mugs that we have given away. We have given away three mugs in the years that I've been here. 1995, uh, 2005, and as recently as 2010, we gave mugs away. How many still have your mugs at home? Look at that, look at that, look at that. Don't sell them on eBay, please. Don't sell them on eBay, all right? But, uh, and we, you know, we've enjoyed some great cooking and great fellowship, and, uh, and so it's been, a, it's been a great time. This year, this year is a little, is a little different, it's a little special, because Lord willing, Lord willing, this will be our last anniversary for the pastor and the first lady of Leighton Chapel, all right? Melania and Kristen don't have anything on us, all right? The first lady of Leighton Chapel. This is our this is our last last uh, as pastor and pastor's wife here at Leighton Chapel. Uh, sad? No, no, no. Please, 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 please. I don't I don't want you to be sad. Why? Because it's been a wonderful journey. Thirty years, folks. You think thirty years you put up with me uh, for thirty years? The average stay of a pastor now is four to six years. But we have been together almost 30 years now. And, uh, I, you know, I, 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 it's, it's time. It, it is time. Uh, but God in His wisdom, God in His wisdom and providence has prepared us for this time. Because 13 years ago, He brought John and Bethany, excuse me, to our church. And uh, the church is going to continue. The church is going to continue and I've been practicing. I've been practicing for April of 2021. That's, that'll be our last Sunday, Lord willing, that we're here. So things are going to change in April of 2021. All right? Everybody knows what this is? All right? It still works. And I've been practicing. And, uh, and here's, here's kind of how it's going to go. I'm, you know, the phone's going to ring. I'm going to say, hey, Bill, what do you want? Yeah, call John. 
Yeah, call John. Thank you. Oh, hey, Roland. Oh, you sound upset. Call John. Yeah, just call John. Yeah, yeah, just call John. Huh? I'm, I'm practicing for this special time, and, uh, and it is going to be, it is, we're going to enjoy it, all right? It, we're, this journey is, is together. But our leadership has been preparing, and, you know, we're going to be start sharing things with you. Our leadership has been preparing for this transition in April of 2021. And like all state, the church will be in good hands. Amen? The church will be in good hands. So, amen, amen, yes, 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 yes. So, we don't want to be sad. We don't want to be sad. And uh, so, I want you to turn First 1 Kings chapter 8. First 1 Kings chapter 8, if you're familiar with this passage of Scripture, this is the completion and the dedication of the temple that Solomon has built. Now, as we come upon 1 Kings chapter 8, it must have been, it had to be, uh, a grand and glorious day when after years of planning, years of preparation, and the work, the temple is finally complete. Now, 1 Kings chapter 9, verse number 10, says it took 20 years to complete the temple. That was the temple and all of its surroundings. Uh, they say probably around seven years it took to build the temple itself. And according to BibleCharts.org, the temple and all the buildings, if you estimated what that would cost today, would be between three and six billion dollars. So you can imagine, just try to imagine it's completed and everybody is assembling themselves together for this time of dedication and rejoicing. Now if you remember right, David wanted to build the temple. But God wouldn't let him because he was a man of war. And so David gave Solomon the architectural design for the temple. David also accumulated the treasures and the building materials for the building of the temple. And the temple was located near Mount Moriah, where Abraham had offered Isaac. And of course, as you read, the temple was built of great stone, cedar beams, boards overlaid with gold, and so on and so forth. Solomon offered, we read, we read that Solomon on the day of the dedication offered 22,000 oxen. 22,000, not 2,200, not 220, 22,000 oxen. Now I figured that up. Boxcars used to haul cattle about in the 1980s. They quit doing that, but... Uh, if you put uh, that many oxen in a boxcar, it would take 750 boxcars in a train for 22,000. And then there were 120,000 sheep. I'm not even counting the boxcars in that, all right? 120,000 sheep they offered in the sacrifice. And they held a feast. They held a feast that lasted 14 days here in the scriptures could be very well be the first homecoming dinner on the grounds. All right? The first homecoming dinner on the grounds. So, 1 Kings chapter 8, we're not going to read the whole chapter, but in verses 1 through 11, uh, God's glory filled the temple. They brought the ark, and they brought the tabernacle, and all the things that were with the tabernacle, they brought it, and they brought the, 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 the ark into the temple, and God's glory filled the temple when the ark was brought in. In fact, look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 8. Look at verse, verse number 10. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. My goodness gracious, can you imagine, can you imagine uh, being able to, to, to be a part of that, uh, to see all that's taking place? Now, in verses 12 through 21, Solomon is going to address the people. He's going to share his desire and his intentions to build the house of the Lord. In fact, let's just read, uh, starting at uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse number 12. Then spake Solomon... The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I have surely built thee an house to dwell in. 
a settled place for thee to abide in forever. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and hath with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house, that my name might be therein, but I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David my father, Whereas it was in thine heart to build a house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house unto my name. And the Lord hath performed his word that he spake. And I am risen up in the room of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers, which he brought them out, when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. So Solomon is addressing the people and he's sharing with them his desire and his intentions to build a house for the Lord. Verses 22 through 53, and we're not going to read that, but it's Solomon's prayer. After he addresses the people, starting in verse 22, he starts praying. And I, I encourage you to go back and, 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 and read this prayer. But in his prayer, Solomon is saying, listen, I want you to stay right with God. He's emphasizing revival and repentance as he shares his prayer to God for God's blessing upon God's people. Now, as you read and study this chapter, well, look at verse 54. Let's go to verse 54 first. Uh, in verses 54 through 63, Solomon is, uh, is, is uh, proclaiming God's faithfulness to his people. And you'll notice that as we read. Look at verse 54, 1 Kings chapter 8. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying, all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. What a sight that must have been. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord that had given rest unto his people Israel, According to all that he promised, there hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us, nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him, to walk in all of his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers." And let these my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he, maintain, that he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require. That all the people of the... Verse 60. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings which he offered unto the Lord twenty and two thousand oxen and one hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. Now listen to this. As you read and study this, this chapter, as, as magnificent a, a, a building uh, this must have been, as much as you would look at it and almost take your breath to see all that Solomon did and all that the builders did and everything, as you read and study this chapter, one thing is very evident. Now listen to this. Solomon makes it clear 
that it's not about this magnificent place. Solomon makes it clear that it's the condition of the people's heart that is far more important than the presence of the temple. It was far more important for God's people to dedicate themselves than to dedicate the building. And that's what Solomon is talking about here. Even though it was great and even though it was glorious and it was, it, it was something to, to, to awe at, Solomon says, listen, the most important thing we can do is to give ourselves to the Lord and to remember all God's faithfulness and all that God has done for us. Look at verse 66. And on the eighth day he sent the people away and they blessed the king and went unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David his servant and for Israel his people. This time, this time in 1 Kings chapter 8 is a time of rejoicing at God's blessing, at rejoicing at the present. It's also a time of reflection, of looking back at the past, of all that God has done, all of God's faithfulness to His people. But then it was also a time of renewal as we go ahead to the future. Now that God has a house, now that the ark is now has a home, now it's time to think about the future and what God has for us. You know, there have been some special days of celebration and dedication during these 85 years here at Leighton Chapel Baptist Church. And so we're just going to kind of do a little reminiscing today. Some of you may have seen these before and some of you may have not. But I, I, want, us, I want us just to do a little bit of reminiscing today of where God has brought this church in, in 85 years. You've seen this picture here. This is, this is the original crew right there. This is the original crew, October 1935, in the midst of a depression, this group of people met to begin to establish Layton Chapel Baptist Church in that, that building right over there. And you know I've kidded before about Wilbur's picture being somewhere in there, you know. But he's not here today, so we can't pick on him. He was in Sunday school. But I was looking at this when I was putting this together. You know what? It looks like snow on the ground. If you really look at this, it looks like there's snow on the ground. I meant to ask Wilbur if there was, but I didn't. <laughs> but uh, Miss Godfrey's in this picture and, uh, and just some other people that have been pointed out to me. But if there's snow on the ground, then they're abusing those little babies right there, being out there without any coats on, all right? But that is not snow on the ground. If you've ever been under that building, and I've been under it many, many times, there is that, that's the sand, that's the sandy soil that's under that old building over there. But this group of people, and I am sure, I am sure that this had to be a glorious day. As somebody said, let's take a picture. Let's take a picture. And God's people were able to meet in the house of God for the first time. What a, what a glorious day that must have been. And then you know the building over there. there you know the building that's over there. Uh, our old building. And uh, it's a beautiful building. Uh, and, uh, you know, the original building didn't have that porch on there. Didn't have the sides on there. And actually in Brother John's office is the old chimney uh, where the old coal, coal stove used to be in that building. But that's where when we came, we came to Leighton Chapel Baptist Church, Pulled up on the property, that's the first thing we saw. That was the first thing we saw. And the Lord blessed. The Lord blessed, just like He'd blessed in years before. We, uh, we, uh, we began, uh, I think, first of all, we, began two, we did two services in that building. Two services with about 100 people. That was kind of a challenge, but we did it. I sang a special one Sunday. Many of you maybe were not here, and the ones that were here are not here anymore because they left. But, <laughs> but, uh, but I sang a special one Sunday morning at the 8 o'clock service. Boy, that went over big, but anyway. Uh, and then we, uh, uh, we established, uh, we put a camera in there, 
And we had an overflow room with the TV, so I was the first TV preacher in Anderson Creek. All right? And, uh, but this building now, if you don't know, houses our offices and, and our student center. But there it is. There is the original 1935 building. God's allowed us to preserve it and take care of it, and it still stands today. Well, 1982. 1982, the second building was built, and that was the building right across there, and that's our, uh, it was originally a fellowship hall. Uh, and uh, because we were growing and because we had babies and we had kids and things, we turned that into uh, our nursery building. Uh, Miss Emily's uh, son and daughter-in-law, Dennis and Tracy, uh, were the first ones were the first ones to uh, get married and have their reception in that building. And it wasn't quite finished yet. That's why we know it was 1982. But uh, so that was the second building. That had to be a big thing for the church uh, to have a building and a fellowship hall and. Uh, uh, we had some great, we had some senior citizens meals in that building, and we had singers come in, and it was, it was a great time, a time of rejoicing and a time of God's blessing. Somewhere along the way, not sure what the dates are, somewhere along the way, uh, used to come out the back door of that building and uh, uh, over there, and uh, that, was a, that was the pasture for, for Tommy and Kathy's. Uh, and so in the evening, in the evening, after our service, the goats always used to congregate uh, over there at the back door. Stinking goats. But anyway, somewhere along the way, uh, Tommy Faust would never talk about selling land. But somewhere along the way, Tommy agreed that if Mr. Shaw would, uh, would donate a section of land way up in the corner, uh, Tommy would flip the land. So it was almost... It was almost uh, even that we flipped the land and we got this, this land over here. And then Lachlan Shaw uh, gave us, he almost gave us, we paid him something, this property up here where the, where the parking lot's at. And they came along just a little bit uh, later and we've been able to, God lay, and allow us to be able to uh, accumulate some, some buildings. And then November, November 2021, we, we gathered to dedicate this building here. We gathered to dedicate this building here. And uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute, but uh, the structure itself was, was erected by Sanford Metal Building, and uh, much of the work that was done, and some of you were involved in that, much of the work was done, we did it ourselves, the men of the church and the ladies of the church uh, were able to do it, and then what we couldn't do, we hired local contractors to do. But that, November 2021. Uh, here's a little secret. 2000, excuse me, yeah, 2000, okay, 2001, I'm sorry, 2001. All right, yeah, November 20, yeah, that's coming up. No, no, <laughs> 2001, thank you for that, thank you for that. But uh, before they had the walls up in that building, when it was just the, 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 the concrete floor and the roof, uh, I walked up here one day with my friend, Pastor Tony Wilson, and all of a sudden there was a rumbling. And Tony said, what's that? And I said, I don't know, I've never heard it before. And it was just a loud rumbling. And so I asked the contractor guys, I said, you know, there's a rumble in that roof. And they said, well, it'll go away once we get the walls and everything. It didn't go away. Do you all remember the rumbling roof? How many remember the rumbling roof? Yeah, some of you do. Okay. The, the roof rumbled. When we were in this building, it rumbled so bad, I would have to stop and tell visitors that it's not thundering outside. It got so bad that it disrupted the service. And what happened every time the temperature changed? If it was sunny and got cloudy or it was cloudy and got sunny, this roof just began to rumble from one end to another. And so the big shots from the, the metal building that, that manufactured it, they came out. They sat in here all day long, and it rumbled, and uh, they didn't know what to do with it. So they replaced this, bit, this roof, they replaced this, this whole roof, and that took care of the problem. Evidently, there was some kind of a, you know, 
going on or whatever, but uh, that was one of our kind of uh, uh, tests of faith when the, when the roof was rumbling. I could hear the roof. I could hear the roof down at the house when it rumbled. It was, it was so loud. But one of the concerns, one of the concerns uh, in our meetings when we were discussing building the building, one of our concerns I remember that we did not want to lose our sense of being and belonging when we moved into a larger building. That was one of our concerns. We didn't want to lose the fellowship and the unity and the things that we enjoyed down there in the, in the old building. And praise the Lord, I don't think we did. We really worked hard at that, even though we were an uptown church now. We were an uptown church. Uh, we really tried to maintain family atmosphere and a, and a sense of belonging. Now, the ladies had one request. Now, if you remember in the old building over there, there was no restrooms in that old building. The restrooms were in the nursery building. The ladies had one request. Re- request. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't a request. It was a demand. <laughs> we better have some restrooms. And uh, so we gave them plenty of restroom space, and uh, we're glad of that. But praise the Lord, we paid off this building with our Christmas offering. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. Now back up just a little bit, 2007, we were able to put in our modulars out here. All right? We got in this building, and uh, uh, we had Sunday school classes meeting everywhere. All right? We had a Sunday school class meeting in the storage room over there in the nursery building. We had a Sunday school class meeting in this uh, storage shed out here that we added on to it. We had a Sunday school class out there. Usually, uh, usually it was the junior girls and junior boys uh, that met in those rooms. But we needed Sunday school rooms. And uh, this was our first. This was the, this, this, this unit here, this mobile unit here. That unit was donated by Jerry McDonald and moved here on the property. And believe it or not, it was set up and Jack and Mary Scalf worked on that building right there. Underneath, the building code required us to, uh, the pillars under there, they actually had to be coated uh, with some kind of uh, whatever, uh, a paint or something. Jack and Mary Scalf did that on that building and built the ramps that are on that building. Built them by themselves and then were instrumental in getting that playground set up. And uh, do you ever notice something? Look on the end of the big modular. You ever see what's on there? Let's see the picture of the cross? Uh, every day, you can, if the sun's out, you can see the image of the cross uh, on the end of that building there. Well, then we, uh, we got the, the tan modular. We actually bought the tan one and the white one uh, together. All right, The tan one was ready. had three rooms in it. They went in, set it up. It was ready to move into. The white one... We used to be a, uh, uh, a call center, and there was a bunch of little cubicles and things in there, and we had to completely gut it and uh, had to put uh, our, our five Sunday school rooms that are in there now. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, we also paid uh, for these buildings with our, with our Christmas offering. And uh, in the end, as, progressed, we were able, as, as things progressed, we were able to Put the pavilion in. Uh, Brenda and I rented an airplane one day. <laughs> and we flew around. We actually flew to Atlanta and back, I think. But anyway. And coming back, Brenda said, why don't you take a picture of... That is not true. I am not telling you the truth. Uh, that's actually a drone that the sheriff's department did. And uh, that was the day that we burnt the house that was on the property down there. Because across the road, you can see the fire trucks are staging... Uh, right there, but we put the pavilion in, and uh, there used to be, uh, there used to be right at the pavilion, uh, I had a vision, there was a great big tree up there, a great big beautiful tree, and I envisioned kids gathering around under the tree, and you know, having a good time, and Frank came up to me, and he said, preacher, the tree's got to go, and he got on his bulldozer and was a smile, a smirk on his face. <laughs> Bulldozed that. We got a picture of it somewhere. And I still look at it and I still, 
and he knocked the tree down. But anyway, we got the pavilion up there. Frank, I've forgiven you a long time ago, okay? But uh, that's kind of a picture of, you know, of our, 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 our facilities and what God's done here at Leighton Chapel. In 2015, we remodeled this building, able to have a lobby. And then something else in 2015 took place. Like I say, we're just reminiscing. Uh, I remember the day Kathy Faust called and she said, Preacher, I need to talk to you. Are you in the office? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm in the office. And she came and she laid a folder down in, on my desk and she said, uh, I want to sell you the farm, 54 acres uh, of the farm. Uh, and that's part of it. Actually, the, uh, uh, that that's marked off as our walking trail uh, that's, that's marked off right there. November 19, 2015, we gathered together as a church and we voted to proceed with uh, purchasing the property. We paid that off in January 2018. And I was looking at some papers, and actually it was supposed to, if we kept on schedule with the payments, it was supposed to be paid off this year. But of course we paid it off two years early with, guess what? A Christmas offering. Yeah, our Christmas offering. And now we have a prayer walk and, and a walking trail and, and, uh, and, and a future, whatever is. And I was looking at my notes that uh, I had as I, we presented some things to the church back uh, during that time. And I wrote this. I said, most of us will never see the fulfillment of what God has in store right there on that property. And most of us won't be around to do that. But you know what? God enabled us to have the property and to be used for His honor and glory. So kind of just a little review. Maybe you've never seen that before. Look back at verse 56 again. Verse 56, as Solomon is talking to his people, it's just as, as real and prevalent and relative today as it was back all these many, many years ago. This, this verse could have been read October 1935. And maybe it was. I'm not sure. But this verse and this passage of Scripture here is just as real and just as relevant as it was hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Let's read it again. Verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people, Israel. According to all that he promised, there hath not failed one word of all of his good promises which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. That he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all of his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. And let these words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night that he maintained the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times as the matter shall require. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and there is none else. You know, that's still our desire today. That's still our desire today. You know, we've often said that Anderson Creek may know. In fact, that was one of our themes many, many years ago. But you think about what God has allowed us to do, church family. Not only here, but through our missions these years, that God has allowed us to be involved in faith promise worldwide missions. That not only is Anderson Creek know, but now the world knows that there is a God through our missionaries that are out there faithfully serving. So today, as we as we rejoice where God has brought us from, uh, where we are now, when we reflect on God's direction and God's blessings, it's also a time of renewal for all of us. Things are different. Yeah, they're different. But it's also a time of renewal. We must remember, listen, we must remember in these 85 years 
It's never been about one person. I, I counted, I can't remember how many pastors have been here in the 85 years, but we, have, we actually have them listed uh, in, 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 of, of how many were here and what their names were. It's never been about one person. It's never been about one family. But it's been about a great God and the people of God who have followed the Lord all these years. It's not about our buildings, although God has blessed us and God has blessed us with the buildings and the land. But folks, it is not about our buildings. It is not about uh, the land. But again, it's about the great God and the people of God who have come together to accomplish something for the glory of God. Since that first Sunday, October 1935, when that group of people stood on those steps out there and someone said, let's take a picture. You think about, you think about the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that have come into this church have invested their lives and have sacrificially given and prayed and, and put their heart into the work to bring us to where we are today. So it's, it's the condition of our hearts. Yeah, we rejoice at all this. But it's the condition of our hearts which is far more important, important than the, the, the property and the buildings. It is far more important for us to rededicate our hearts today than to rededicate our buildings. Look at verse 66. On the eighth day, he sent the people away, and they blessed the king. And they went unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David his servant and for Israel his people. What's the future hold? I don't know, but it's a good future. Why? Because God's in control. God's not asleep. All this that's taking place in our world today, God is not asleep. God's not on vacation. He's not, he's not lost touch with reality. He's the same God, Brother John, he's the same God here as he was in 1 Kings chapter 8. He's the same God as he was in October 1935. He's the same God. And we must, we must, we must keep our eyes on him. And trust Him every, every day as we proceed into the future. So today, so today on this 85th homecoming, I'm asking, I'm asking today that you join me and you join our church in rededicating our lives to the Lord. Things are going to get different. They're going to get better. We're going to be back together again soon. We're going to be back together doing the things that we, 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 we have usually done with Sunday school and all the things. But God's still in control. And so when we pause this morning, let's rededicate our hearts to the Lord and rededicate our hearts and, and lives to the, the mission of this church. Why? What is that? That people may know that there is a God in heaven. Let's bow and pray together. Father, we come today and we thank you for this time that we have to be able to, to look back and to see where you have brought this church to, where you brought us from in these 85 years. Lord, we're thankful for the host, many, many, many folks, many of them in heaven today, who invested and sacrificially gave and prayed and, and served here in this place to bring us here to this Sunday. And we're grateful. And Father, more than that, we're grateful for your faithfulness. Lord, we're thankful for every person, every soul that's come to faith in Christ during these 85 years. Lord, we pray as we proceed ahead, as we proceed ahead to the future, whatever that is, 
that we're going to keep our eyes on you. We're going to keep trusting you. We're going to keep following you to lead us where you would have us to be. May it ever be so, Lord. Please, use us for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Bethany's going to play through an invitation song. And I'm going to ask you just to use this time. If you want to come to the altar, you can come to the altar and you can kneel here and pray. But I'm going to ask us today as a church family that this be a time of rededication to the Lord, reconsecration to the Lord and the purpose for which He has called us. Bethany's going to play. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for being part of the great work of Leighton Chapel. You are dismissed. God bless you. Have a good, great rest of the day.